Hello everyone, this is Kevin, your entrepreneur, and uh, I'm a little shaken up right now. Um, a little shaken up, you probably read the title, but uh, yes, I was attacked slash robbed by an Uber passenger this evening. Uh, it's like 2.49, um, I got home, I've just gotten home from talking to the police, and uh, I will be sending Uber a very strongly worded email in a few minutes. But as a way of calming down, I figured I would make this video, <coughs> and it's, uh, uh, so what happened? Well, um, I, I was doing, having a very good night, by the way. Um, not just in terms of just that the day was going fine. I was meeting some great people. I got, like, over $30 in tips, which never happens, but I was... I'd made like $160 in fares, largely because of surges, in six hours. It was great. It's been going great. Um, I know there's that saying that you should sometimes quit while you're ahead, but sometimes in this industry, when you're having that good of a night, you keep going because you, um, you need to save for the nights that are not going to be so good. And I picked someone up. And uh, Korean guy. So sorry to any Korean viewers out there. I know this is not representative of everyone, but you know it is what it is. And uh, he, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he asked how long it would take to get there. And I said about seventeen minutes, which is what the way he said. And he said, "What? Why? Why so long?" It's like because it's in Irvine. That's why. He's like, "Well, I get off here." I'm like. Uh, okay. I was like, well, then he's, then he's kept demanding. Why so long after I pulled over? He's like, I, it's in Irvine. That's what, and he showed me the Google maps, which showed 15 minutes. We were off by two minutes. Like, obviously he had been drunk. He, he had been drinking too much. Um, then for some reason he starts demanding my phone. He's like, give me your phone. It's like, uh, no, I'm not giving you the phone. It, and, and kept going like this for some what's I don't know what this means exactly but but like I, I at that point I really just want him out of the car and he was like give me phone give me phone so I said no look I will cancel the phone the trip if you want and I reached over grabbed the phone at that point he reached he reached over took my hand grabbed the phone out of my hand shoved me to the side and took the phone phone um, now then, at this point, I did two things after he shoved me. First of all, like the iPod that was in my lap, I quickly, you know, hit it. I didn't know what he wanted to take, but I was going to at least try to hide one thing. And then as I had it, I reached over and I grabbed the pepper spray. He has the phone in my hand, in his hand. I'm not having a good night, folks. I, it's amazing how fast this didn't turn into a good night. And I don't know. And I don't know what he was going to do with it, but you know, he takes the phone and he looks at it. He, I, I tell he doesn't know what to do, so he just puts it in his pocket. And he reaches out. He goes to the back of the car, takes pictures with his cell phone, goes to the front, takes pictures, and takes pictures of me. Um, closes my doors, and at that point. I mean, I don't know if he's going to actually hurt me, but you know what? He would. He shoved me, so that, that's considered assault. Technically, it didn't hurt much, but it shook me up. And he has now taken my property and put it in his pocket. I decided it's time to get out of there. So I just drive, and he starts shouting at me, which suggests that he probably was not done with whatever the heck he was intending to do. So just go down the block, and there is an AMPM Arco there. And I go in and I ask, tell them, I've just been robbed. Can I please use your phone and call the police? Amazingly, they will not do this. They will. They say they do not have a phone. And for the record, yes, I will be writing to Arco and asking if this is true. Because that, I, first of all, I, I don't believe them. Secondly, under emergency circumstances... You do need to let people call 911. They had a payphone outside, but the payphone didn't work. So, 
Um, and you know, you know, in all fairness, I don't know if people even check to see if those pay phones work anymore. Why, why, why would you? Almost no one uses them until you actually need them. So drove down for a while, drove farther and, you know, close shop, close shop. Found another liquor store. This one was open, went in, explained what happened. And even though they were closing in like a minute, they let me use the phone, called the police. They showed up and they asked, can you show us the spot where it happened? So they followed me, I took them to the spot. Guy's not there anymore, of course. I mean, at this point it's been 10, 12 minutes maybe. I don't know. And uh, explained to them what happened. This is when they tell me that uh, they're going to call Garden Grove Police because this is outside their jurisdiction. I must have been just on the line. But they'd stay with me until the Garden Grove Police arrived. Well, guess what should happen while we're waiting for the Garden Grove Police to show up? There's a car that pulls over, door opens, and... You know, there is an altercation between the driver and the passenger. So the police, you know, they shine their light and they drive up and they get in the car to find out what's going on. At this point, I'm curious. So I get out of the car and I look and guess who? what? It's my little Korean friend. He has called another Uber. And, um, well, apparently he's giving him the exact same problem. Yep. So the first thing I say is I say, that's him, officer. That's the guy who who took my phone. And, you know, the police did what they did. You know, they cuffed him. He's totally drunk, totally wasted. Um, kept saying, I'm Korean. I'm Korean over and over again. I don't speak English very well, which, you know, like, no, that's not going to help you. It, it, it. It's just not. So the officers have him cuffed. He's lying, not lying, he's sitting on the hood of the car. We're still waiting for Garden Grove police to show up and they ask, you know, is this your phone? It's like it is. And by the way, I do want to point out that these cracks and stuff that you see all over the phone did not exist before tonight. Did not exist. These were not here. An hour or so, an hour and a half ago. Now they're here. Make of that what you will. <laughs> Whatever he did, how on earth did he? And also, my phone cover is missing. How on earth did he manage to do this much damage to my phone? When there was a phone, when there was a. I guess I gotta get a new phone. It still works, but I, I guess I gotta get a new phone now. And. Uh, so yeah, then finally Garden Grove Police show up. I don't know if they're actually going to book him. I think they were going to take him for like a few hours because I got the phone back and they didn't want to process paperwork over, um, you know, a cell phone case. Which I don't necessarily blame them for. I probably wouldn't want to either. So, according to my records, um, apparently he kept... We were still on the trip for about 36 minutes before he finally, uh, before I guess he finally figured out how to end the trip. And, uh, well, I guess that means I got $5.36 for all that. So, this is obviously not a super frequent occurrence, folks. In fact, and believe it or not, this isn't even the worst Uber ride I've had. It's probably the second worst, if we're going to be honest. So, in the, in the second worst, no, I, no one got seriously hurt, and with the exception of the cell phone co cover, the phone which was stolen got returned in less than an hour. So, had we not gotten it back tonight, uh, obviously I would have had the guy's address. And would have been able to track him down that way. But I'm glad it got done tonight. So technically, I think I think because he shoved me, I think technically that counts as assault. But 
uh, who knows, maybe, maybe it wasn't worth going through the court hassle, I don't know, but, so, I'm, so obviously I'm making the video, first of all, just to tell the story, just to kind of get it out there, it's kind of therapeutic in some way, uh, the second reason is to explain that, you know, maybe that Monday video might be late now, um, I, this does get my daily videos out of the way, but I might be taking a couple days off, who knows, I, it doesn't sound like a lot happened, some of you might even be calling me a wimp, but it's a little bit, it's scary when it happens, it is, and, you know, you sometimes just gotta, gotta relax and take a break from, from his, oh geez, I just gotta chill down my spine, I, uh, so, yeah, and so, so if, also, if you see other videos, but I might see much more cheerful. Keep in mind that I ha do have like seven videos recorded before this incident. So um, don't think that I just got over this like right away. This will probably take at least a couple days to kind of shake it off, but we'll see. So um, yeah, and I and I'll get let you know what happens. What Uber's response is. Um, this is another example why. Have some pepper spray on you. Be prepared. And here's the thing. If someone is belligerent and takes something from you, but he gets out of your car, I do recommend just getting out of there as soon as possible. I mean, the phone can be replaced. Uh, but you don't want to get into an unnecessary fight with someone who could do some serious damage to you. And I mean... When I was driving away, it looked like he was trying to pick a fight with the police. So I'm hoping that that means he tried to attack them, which means he definitely gets more than just a few hours in jail. I'm hoping. Anyway, that's that. Do you have any scary Uber stories? <laughs> I guess now's a good time to share them. So comment below. And be safe out there.